happy Monday and welcome back to Sideline Stories with Sid. Today for our special guest, we have Coach Townsend, who is a KU men's basketball coach, and we have his daughter, Kalia Townsend, who is on the KU cheerleading team. So while many may know you guys as a coach and a cheerleader, what's another title that you hold that is more to you than wearing canvas across your chest? Well, first and foremost, I'm her father. Mm -hmm. So uh, Kalia has been here since I think she was two years old, maybe. Uh, and uh, so I used to bring her to Hilltop on my way to work every day. And um, I remember we'd played certain songs and sing in the car. So those are my memories of her. And then to watch her grow up and and get into her sport, cheer, and um, and continue it and be a cheerleader here is, is like uh, one of my fondest memories of her but um i'm i'm proud of her but but i'm her dad first and yeah. just want what's best for her. uh being his daughter and being able to support him through all the basketball since i was a little girl and being able to be a part of so many like big games and knowing when it's his scout and cheering a little harder those games just yeah. in general throughout my whole life was it something growing up that you like dreamed of? Like you obviously were a Jayhawk pretty young. So growing up, were you like, this is what I want to do. I want to cheer for KU and I want to cheer on my dad and cheer on yeah. the fans. Yeah, I actually used to tell my mom like when I was a little girl and I was in the stands, I used to tell her like, oh, I'm going to be a KU cheerleader. And she used to kind of like be like, oh, okay. Like he's just supporting <laughs> me, whatever. But then it actually happened. She was like. I mean, did you ever imagine it for you? Like what's it like growing up as a cheerleader and you know she has this dream and you're a coach at KU, one of the greatest basketball schools in the nation. And now – you're on the court, you're on the sidelines, but you look over and there's your daughter cheering on you. So. Well, it's special to me. I usually try to always go give her a hug mm -hmm. before the game when I see her. Uh, but she actually broke my heart, just so you know. Uh, I wanted her to go to Kansas and be a cheerleader, uh, and she went to Grand Canyon first. And so I was like, oh, there went that dream. But um, but she came to her senses and <laughs> came back to Kansas. and. I think she got homesick, and now I think she thinks it was a great decision. But um, uh, it's it's great to see her out there on the sidelines every game. Used to look in the stands and give her a salute, and now I could just go across the court and give her a hug. So it's it's good. Mm -hmm. And you started at Grand Canyon, and now you're here, and you chose a good school to come back. I mean, we just won yeah. the championship. What's it like for you coming back and cheering and being here and being with your dad? It was definitely the right decision, and – I don't think I could be happier with mm -hmm. it. Like, I don't know, all of it, even just all the basketball mm -hmm. games. Obviously, the national championship was, like, a special one, but honestly, all of them were just really special. And then for you, Coach Townsend, but you're also dad, does he ever keep the coach in him when he's home, or is it always, like, dad when he comes home, or is he always trying to, like, coach you and other things? Mm, both. It depends. <laughs> depends on what's going on in life so yeah be a good life coach if i need it but can also just be dad when he needs Any, to be you're a girl dad we got mm -hmm. five daughters four uh four four yeah okay you coach a bunch of men yes but you're a girl dad yes what what's it like what's it like being a girl uh dad? i love it mm -hmm. because uh you know boys i'm around the guys all the time and yeah. they're a little bit sassier and okay um but you know the girls are a little bit moody um which is okay um, they have mood swings and uh, they have a little more problems than guys. They care a little bit uh, more about some stuff that guys don't care as much about. Um, but it's um, it's been great to be Kalia. She's my she's the baby and um, she's done done great. And we're everybody's proud of her. All her brothers and sisters and mm -hmm. mom and dad. And how do you balance work life with coaching life and cheer and? Do you both still get that family time together, or is it, like, hard during basketball season? What's it like? Well, now that she's got a boyfriend, and she's – um, boyfriend. <laughs> she doesn't spend as much time with me. But, you know, they <laughs> yeah, they, they actually uh, do come over and hang out with us mm -hmm. some. Um, but we, we, we do have – you know, we go on vacation. We try to plan a family vacation, and we all get together. But as a coach, I wasn't there a lot when she was young growing up, and uh, – you know, just the demands of the job and the time uh, commitment. Um, but I talk to them on the phone all the time or FaceTime, and they know I'm always there when, when if they need me. Um, but 
it, it is hard and um, I'm glad she's here because I do get to see her way more than I would have if she was at Grand Canyon. Yeah, and what are game days like in Allen Fieldhouse with you guys both being there? Do you guys have like a little like ritual? Do you ever get to see each other before the game? I know you said you try to give her a hug, but. Yeah, he'll come up to me during pregame, like during shoot around. When, mm -hmm. But our old ritual used to be, he would give me like a salute when I was okay. in the stands. So that was like my whole mm -hmm. growing up. Or even now if I'm like not cheering, because there's obviously only a certain amount. So even yeah. if I'm not cheering and I'm in the stands, that still happens. But during pregame, he'll definitely come up yeah. to me and mm -hmm. give me a hug. My friends are always like, Cleo, there's your dad. <laughs> there he is, right there, all the time. Yeah, and I'd then, probably embarrass her, but. You <laughs> know. Do you get embarrassed? No. No? Not <laughs> I mean, it has to be kind of cool. It is cool. I mean, it's unique. And it's not, special, yeah, yeah. So not everyone can ever share that story or even yeah. have that as an opportunity. And the, everyone saw the recent TikTok that went viral that you made. Mm -hmm. And we already kind of talked about it earlier, but in 08, national championship, the KJ Hawks won. You're on the side, you're in the stands with your mom, but mm -hmm. now you're in New Orleans together. Mm -hmm. And it's a different type of, it's a different type of win. Like national championship that we just had, it has to be so much sweeter for you and for you both because you're wearing KU across your chest, you're wearing KU across your chest. What's that like? Well, I think it was great. Uh, I probably should have went and hugged Coach Self first, but I think I went and found Kalia first, yeah. and uh, she jumped on me, and that hug was was special to me. And then I went and found my wife, and like you said, the time we put in, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a real sacrifice on the family, so just wanted to let them know how much I appreciate them letting me do something I love. And I did find Coach Self later eventually but and <laughs> gave him a hug. But, uh, yeah, they, my family to me, uh, with them supporting me and, and, you know, to fulfill and live my dream is meant a lot to me. So I found her first and went and gave her a hug and asked her coach if it was okay if I took her around the court. And I think Kat said, yeah, and, yeah. and uh, I brought her around and showed her off to everybody. Mm -hmm. What's that like for you? Uh it's still like indescribable but yeah. I think getting to just like be on the court was so much different than ever like sitting up in the stands not that I was like way up there it was always like yeah. down close but still just like being right there and like even getting to see all of like his reactions like up close to, like refs making bad calls but so it just felt like I was like in the game that yeah. much more than like if I was in the stands so yeah it was definitely crazy yeah and then the comeback, all of that was just... All of it. Everything was a crazy game about it. Yeah. And last week we had Carson Kale, who was on the show, and he showed, he shared us with his favorite sideline story. So what is your guys' favorite sideline story? It could be different. It could be something for you, something for you. It could be something you share. Something that's unique that no, nobody else would be able to share or know. I, I think my favorite uh, sideline story is uh, we had a player, and I'm not going to name him, uh, just because we were on the bench and uh, he actually made a basket for the other team. And uh, okay, okay. He, we, it was a free throw and he, he boxed out and he boxed out great. He went up and got the rebound and then he went back up and put it in. Okay. And every coach on the bench, and, and it was in that field house and it was a close game, big game, uh, top five ranked team. And that put them up by seven after he made the basket for them. And it was dead silent in the field house. And all the coaches are going, can you believe this just happened? And James Naismith is turning over in his grave right now. And, uh, you know, it was, it was one of the coaches said, hey, we need to give the kid confidence. Another coach said, well, what about our confidence? But it was on the bench, and we were arguing about a guy making a basket for the other team, and it was uh, it was one of my uh, favorite all-time things because uh, nobody could believe what happened. I've, I've never <laughs> seen it happen in, in college, and it hadn't happened since, but I would think that would be my favorite one. Did we win that game? We ended up winning, thank okay. God, by uh, – I think we won by five or – Can we get a year? Four. Uh, Kalia actually knows who the kid is, I think. Uh, so I it would have been though. in uh, – yeah, young. she was young. So it was probably – it was before the 2008 uh, okay. championship. Okay. So, And and I recruited the kids, so that, that may be a dead giveaway. So that's how smart I was. <laughs> what about you? My favorite with my dad was definitely national championship. Yeah. And after getting to hug him, that just felt so surreal. 
But I think my favorite just being on the, t like, cheer team um, was actually during the Texas Tech game this year. Okay. And I was, I remember there was, like, two girls on, like, this side of me, and we're, like, all, like, hugging. And then we, like, stand up and cheer every time we score. And so when, like, Ochai scored the three to, like, send it to overtime, we're all, like, hugging and, like, freaking out. And then when Allen Fieldhouse, like, erupted, it was just... Mm -hmm crazy so I think that was definitely one of my favorites and that's something that I'll never forget. I mean as we've seen there's always more to the sideline and there's always more to people's stories because they're all on the sideline so thank you for joining me thank you for sharing your story I will see you all next Monday for another sideline stories with Sid.